G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. Today I'm out at the property of elite equine veterinarian Kurt Enzinger and I'm having a look at some revolutionary recycled plastic posts with a round steel core that prove to be a very promising and exciting fence post. And I'm going to find out from his contractor, David Le Cerf, and also from Kurt himself, how these posts are to work with, have a look at them being put in, and then talk to Kurt about why he's made this choice as an elite horse vet for his own horses. Guys, if you like this video, don't forget, hit the subscribe button down there, give it a thumbs up, and there's plenty more content on timthompson.ag, plus lots of links to reviewed products like this. I started out having a chat to Kurt about why he chose this particular product for his property and I also wanted to find out if he had any tips for viewers that were looking to put in their own horse fence. So Kurt, you're a high performance horse vet um, and you've decided to go with these posts, with the plastic forest posts for your own personal horses. Yes. There must be some good reasoning behind that. What have, what's led you to the decision to use plastic forest posts as opposed to about the 180 other options that are available? Um, I, I was drawn to these posts, uh, one, one for the design, uh, with the cross here, it's no 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 uh, excessive use of, of product that's not needed. Yep. Uh, the soft plastic finish, it's got a really nice smooth um, finish, um, and and so therefore safe for horses. Because um, they're rational beings, aren't they? Yes. They look after themselves. Yes, yes, they, they'll self-destruct in anything we put them in, so we don't need to give them any excuses. Yep. Um, the, I like the fact that it's using recycled uh, material. Um, I like the fact that they're, they're, they're rating, um, the fire rating and everything, and, and the durability, they're not going to... Um... Because they actually, they will outlast a wooden post yes. in sort of an ordinary fire. I yes. mean, I wouldn't put any post up against Black Saturday or anything like that, but in a normal fire, these guys will outlast a wooden yes. post. Like yes, that. that's my understanding, 350 degrees. Uh, yeah. Rated so, um, and the fact that you can um, you, you have this 40 mil sleeve coming out, in, you know, and, and you can have them pre drilled at whatever height, heights you need, um, and so it does away with the uh, the need for insulators, yeah, right. So, nice and neat finish, yeah, okay. And they've got the dome top and everything else, so that you now, one thing I do notice they are quite flexible, yes, is that a good thing for horses? Yes, look, I, I was a little bit concerned about that, but uh, the the, the um, experiences I've had with the plastic, other people with the plastic posts and, and, and horses running through the fences and things, that, that, that that's been a good thing, a positive thing, not, sort of not a negative. Like a trampoline yes, sort of thing. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, very good. Now, regardless of plastic posts, I have a really well-recognised and experienced horse vet here, and I've got people that want to make fences for horses. Yes. What would be some top tips from you? You must see injuries from fences all the time. What are some absolute top tips from you for horse fencing? I, we, we chose these for, for, for my own property here, for, for our own horses, and also we have clients' horses here. So this safety yep. was the number one thing for me. I only need one client's horse injured, and that, that, that you know can be devastating for, for all concerned. So yeah. the top tips for me would be uh, stay away from barbed wire, stay away from ring lock or anything with an open, a big open um, uh, square for them to get their foot through. So um, if, you, if you need mesh, if you must have mesh, the equine mesh is yes. worth the money? equine mesh or we use the chain mesh which is like your cyclone mesh yep. um, here for our foaling yards yep. um, and so I stay away from those and um, I think another another tip that we do here is we, we don't go uh, all the way to the ground with the wires so we stay yep. our bottom wires uh, still uh, what about a fair way, five, or so? 500 I've got two options here at 500 and 600 yep. to, for my lowest wire and you can see that we've got a tall post so about 1500 high so top tip is go for a higher post if you've got horses yes and bring your bottom wire up off the ground um, and you were saying that's all about pouring yes so horses will strip their legs yes pouring through a low fence yes yeah right good tips there guys if anyone's setting up a horse fence avoid barbed wire avoid your, your wide open sheep mesh and go for a higher post with the wire bottom wire further off the ground. What about sighting wires and things like that? What's your opinion on that? Yes, yeah, yeah we're, that, we're actually using that here. So I think a visual, a good visual 
that that side that you know the white wires or the or the the, the, the visual cue for the horses to the defences here because these posts are black. Yes. Uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people like to paint their posts black. Yes. I've noticed. Yes. Particularly in the horse game. And they look and of, they look nice. Oh, yeah. 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 So uh, we're using actually we're not using any wire at all in these fences. We're using a an insulated um, a thick insulated wire with a carbon fibre through it that it's white. Yep. Uh, that's that's electrified and then we're using uh, Baco wires in the other. And the other ones there, so which just are the a plastic one electrified wire. wire. Uh, we'll, we'll probably do one at the top and one at the bottom. Right. Yep. Okay. And Haven't all fully the, decided. All yeah. the rest of them are just your Baco wires. Yes. Yep. So that they're so so they're a visual for the horse. Well, Kurt, thank you very much for your time, mate. No I'll worries. I'll go over and have a chat to David now, who's your contractor, who's putting in some some posts over the other yes, side. Yes. Yeah. He's got a fair bit done today. He's pretty good at his job. Yeah. Um, so we'll go and have a talk to him, we'll talk about the practicalities of putting these posts in, but it's good to get your opinion on horse fencing and the reasoning as to why you've chosen this particular product. Thank no, you very, very much happy. for your time. Mate. Thanks Tim, no Appreciate worries. Appreciate it. See you. While I was chatting to Kurt about his fencing options and choices, David Le Cerf was busy with his daughter Yvette, setting out a new fence line and getting prepared to run some posts. He's a very much in demand, very experienced and very careful fencing contractor so I thought it would be good to talk to him about his experience with the Plastic Forest Posts. So Dave, thanks very much for your time today. Really appreciate it. No worries. Um, it might seem a bit ironic we're talking about plastic posts standing in front of a wooden <laughs> post. Um, but there's a good reason for this, isn't there? You need, yeah. you need to have uh, wooden posts at the corners. And you were saying also yeah. in the dips? Uh, the plastic posts are good, but with the flex in them, they're very hard to use on the, as a corner post and also in a, in a gully. Uh, because they're nice and smooth, uh, if there's a bit of upward pressure on the wire, it's likely to lift the post out. But you have that trouble with wooden posts as well at times in the wet, so that's just a problem you put up with. All right, so here's the post, Dave. Um, can you tell me a little bit about it? Well, this is the equine post. Uh, yep. And as you can see, it's got a smooth round knob on the top. Yep. Uh, the normal post for for stock, for cattle or anything, yep. uh, it's flat on the top. These are a little bit longer because it's an equine fence where we're making it 1.5 metres high. Yeah, okay, yeah. so you can get them yeah. in a range of lengths. Now, yeah. these are a little bit more expensive than the standard wooden post, aren't they? They are. But you're saying but economically it works out. Can you explain yeah. that to us? Well, see, so they're, they're pre-drilled. You can actually uh, order them the way you want to suit you suit you okay so they can be uh, custom custom yep. made yeah and as far as it comes uh, with, a, with an electric fence you don't have to worry about insulators because it's plastic it's yep. already insulated so you don't have the cost of buying the insulators or the staples or the attachment to attach the yeah. electric fence or the, the insulator so when you so, quote for a job do you quote more or less money if you're putting these posts in generally? Oh, it, it works out less. It's, uh, they're a lot easier, a lot less time consuming. Uh, so you can actually get the job done, move on to the next one. Now, there's a couple of other advantages. Um, I, I really want to, I'm really keen to see you drive a few of these in um, because I hear that noise is not such a big issue with these. There's no noise. You can talk. I can talk to me operator on the tractor. Yeah. The noise of the tractor annoys you, that's about all. Wow. <laughs> that's the only noise you got. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And they, do they drive okay? They drive very easy. I uh, noticed you're, you're digging pilot holes. Yeah, because the, uh, the length of these, the, uh, the manufacturer can put the dome on, there's no point. And yep. uh, I find it's easier just to use, a, I've got a 75 mil auger. I yep. just drill a 75mm pilot hole. You don't have to go down the full length of what you need it to go down. you just got to start uh, it out. Yeah, I get the first probably 200mm uh, yep. and that gives the post grip. Once it's got grip, there's, uh, it's easy. They just go in as quick as light. Yeah, right. So they, they've got a fair bit of flex in them, which I suppose mm. for horses is probably a good thing, isn't it? If they're going to run into a fence or something, yeah. it's going to give and bounce That's right. rather than injure them. And the fence we've done before over at Trafalgar where a, a wild beast went through the fence. Yep. Uh, normally a, uh, a wooden post or something, it'd snap it off. Or if you had a steel post, it'd bend it and they And they cactus. Yeah. yeah. You can't and straighten them. This one did bend, but <laughs> yeah. you were able to re-straighten it by hand. That's right. Yeah, you yeah. pull it back up. Uh, the, 
these posts do have a, a 10 mil steel rod in the center of them for stability. Yep. Uh, and that just pulls back up straight. The yeah. fence, fence was repaired in a matter of about 20 seconds. All right, Dave, well, I'm super keen to see these posts go in. So um, do you mind if I hang around for a while and yeah. have a look at you guys, the expert team of David and Yvette throwing these things in? Kurt had asked David and Yvette to come all the way from Gippsland to put his fence in because of their careful attention to detail and their pride in their work. And it was just wonderful to watch this father and daughter team put up such a straight, good fence in such record time. conversation while you're ramming a post. Yeah. They're, uh, it makes work a lot more comfortable, I can tell you. Anyone who's ever been around a post rammer before will know the loud noise that cause so much fatigue during the day. These posts were so incredibly quiet. So I'd really like to thank Kurt and David for their time today and the team from Plastic Forests for contacting me and letting me know about this great new product. As always, if you like this video, please hit the little subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and if you want to find out about these products and more, check out timthompson.ag. See you next week.